Okay, hello people. This is the second video tutorial that I'm going to do for the missed uh, lecture or, or lab on uh, Friday. Uh, the problem that I want to do is actually uh, is in the back of the book and it's uh, I think it was given as one of the test problems uh, several years ago. Uh, this is the mechanism that we want to uh, create. Okay, notice that the wheel at the end of the, uh, the uh, this uh, connecting rod is rolling. So this is not supposed to be sliding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, delete the mechanism and re remove all the uh, remove all the uh, restraints uh, uh, assembly res constraints so that we do it from the scratch basically. So let me delete the mechanism and delete uh, uh, yeah, delete the simulation. Okay, so we're back to uh, basically an assembly and we're going to move these apart so that we can uh, see what's going on. So here is the crank. There is the wheel, there's the wheel, there's a crank, and there is the base, of course. Uh, all, the, all the constraints I'm going to delete because we're going to do it from, uh, from scratch. Now first, let's anchor, let us anchor the, the base. Then we create a revolute between the crank and the base. So we're going between the axis of the crank and the axis of the base and between the face of that uh, base and the back face of the crank. This will turn into a revolute joint. Okay. Uh, then we're gonna, uh, let's see now. Uh, then we're gonna uh, uh, create a revolute between, we'll try to create the constraints for a revolute between this hole and that pin. Coincidence between that axis and this axis and coincidence between the, the face of the, the uh, the base and the back face of this crank. So uh, let me march through this. There is back face. Okay, good. We're next. We're going to insert this wheel into that uh, into that hole. So coincidence between the axis of the hole and the axis of the wheel, and coincidence between the face of the crank and the back face of the wheel. This is going to become another revolution. I have arranged things so that uh, when you look at this view, the sum of these two dimensions is the same as that because I would like to create a roll curve joint between this curve and the curve of the, the crank. The only thing is that if I did try uh, to create a roll curve in DMU, it would not accept it because these two are not touching each other. So my first task is to bring this uh, wheel and place it on the cam. And that we have to do with the uh, So the, this face, the face, the round face of the wheel and the round face of the cam. And if it doesn't look good, change internal to external and then it will be okay. All right. So let's go to DMU. Get the magic wand out. Where is it? Right there. A new mechanism. Mechanism one. Auto create and we say okay. So let's see what kind of joints we've got. We should have uh, three revolutes and that's that's why we have three degrees of freedom. Okay, the roll curve one we have to do. So look for the roll curve and that's this one. Select the, the curve uh, which represents the uh, periphery of the wheel and for the second curve select the uh, select the, the curve that represents the periphery of the uh, of the cam and we say okay the degree of freedom is one and all we have to do is to make for example this uh, uh, revolute between the crank and the base angle driven zero to 360 and of course this says mechanism can be simulated first let's uh, do it manually drag this yeah you can see that it's working Good. now uh, reset it uh, reset exit and if you want to make a cartoon now so create a select a mechanism drag this thing all the way to the end do, don't fool around with uh drag it back and forth insert rewind and make it out uh, chase each other and don't forget to change this thing to anything but one and then we can see what's going on that's pretty much it okay let me see if I have time to do a third a third video clip. If not, then this is going to stay on Blackboard and you can use it 
uh, tomorrow. Uh, Alright, stop this.